Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and another different type of video this morning, a little bit more of a slowed down, relaxed pace as we discuss some more long-term possibilities of Bitcoin. This will be the video that they don't want you to see. Of course, I say that in jest. We're just going to be talking about some different opportunities um, and, of course, different perspectives on what is likely to happen in the coming future for in the not so distant future for Bitcoin. Now, I want to preface this conversation by saying I actually do believe in Bitcoin as a long term um, as a long term player. I do believe that it's that it's likely that it could get to one of those crazy numbers that you see John McAfee talking about, like 100,000, 200,000, all that sort of uh, very interesting um, uh, flashy type numbers that people that people speak on however of course perspective and the way that we get there is obviously going to be variable so i'd like to discuss today some different scenarios that i'm seeing and again i want to preface this conversation by saying whenever i'm going over long-term outlooks on anything no matter what the underlying trading asset or instrument is i'm trying to just i'm kind i'm trying to construct a more bullish and a more bearish scenario in kind of their trigger points and what that would look like and how it kind of unfold so without further ado we're going to jump right into our gdax chart over here for good old bitcoin and first things first i'm going to try to go over the bullish scenario now the bullish scenario a little bit uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit desperate right now, but you know what? We, it must be done in the uh, in the face of doing a thorough analysis. All right, so let's give the bulls the benefit of the doubt here. Okay, by all intents and measurements, the way that I look at this chart right here is that I can see very easily and very clearly that we have a very, very strong support level that is essentially the floor as of now for Bitcoin and what's really going to be the focal point of this video. And it's right here. And in fact, it's not just right here at about 60, 68.50. It's actually a zone from 68.50 down to here. And again, if you're in the technical analysis program, you know exactly what I'm thinking over here. But I'll just kind of leave it like this and, uh, and let the chips fall where they may from here. Anyways. So I can see that as long as we're above here, you can make the case that perhaps this is going to be your low on Bitcoin. Now, does it look like your picture perfect low? Does it look like the one that you're going to find on Investopedia? Does it look like one of the ones that you're going to find, you know, throughout the annals of history going over all sorts of different trading assets? Well, in my experience, no. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, given the whole context of over here, typically you want to see after a blow off top site type uh, parabolic, you know, market cycle move, you want to see some sort of a uh, some sort of a capitulation and then some sort of a sideways accumulation area being put in, you know, over a long period of time. Now, I'm sure people are saying, hey, Crown, this is it right here. There's your capitulation right there. And I'd say, you know what, if if we're going to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, then yes, this would act as your capitulation um, candlestick right here. Now, with that said, um, you could say that, you know, perhaps we are accumulating, you know, in this area right here, especially below about 7,000. There is strong signals that, you know, but, you know, there is accumulation going on these rounded off bottoms right here and right here. You know, that's that's your that's pretty classical signs. So fair enough. All right. So <laughs> point taken. Anyways, um, I'd like to point out this right here. Again, keep in mind, if you are trying to recreate this analysis yourself, I'm on the logarithmic scale, as I believe that that is really the best way to be looking at Bitcoin. Now, if I want to make the case for the bulls, here's what I could say. I could, I could have said last weekend, well, look at this. You got a nice, um, you got a nice perhaps falling wedge being put in, um, <laughs> except, except for the fact, you know, we broke out of it uh, early last week, I believe it was right here on this very low volume kind of uh, throw over above this upper resistance trend line right here, closing above significantly, but again, on very low volume, the, the following candlestick actually completely negated that first one um, by a little bit more and uh, on higher volume and thrusting it right back down into that falling wedge. So what I could have I uh, could have made the case for as a bulls right here actually looks a lot more bearish to me. Anytime that you have this sort of formation be negated and be negated really, really fast like this um, in a in your face way, in an in your face way, I should say proper gram over here. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's definitely not a good sign. And it's very indicative of the underlying uh, forces that that be. What else do we talk? What else do we have to talk about? Well, you could also make the case or you could have made the case up until about yesterday. That, and again, just getting rid of everything over here. Oh, we actually probably should leave in those uh, two horizontals, but you know what? They're not they're not too important for this area right here. You could have made the case. Okay, well, you got a nice uh, nice rounded off bottom right here. Perhaps this is even a cup with handle. Or let me just uh, get back on those horizontals, put them right here. These will be relevant going forwards here. 
uh, as you can see, we've already tested up the, the top side of that. Anyways, you could have made the um, the argument for a cup and handle. Uh, this would have been your little handle right here. However, with <laughs> you know at the start of the weekend, we've already negated this as well. So again, another failed uh, another failed pattern. So what <laughs> what else is there to look at for the bulls? Again, I really actually don't see too much except for just looking at this area right here. I don't believe that it is uh, pertinent to be extremely bearish until that level is actually closed and confirmed below. So let's go over the bearish case. All right, let's go over the bearish case again. I'm going to get rid of our nice little rounded off bottom right there. And let's see what they got because they got a pretty damn strong case over here. This red line, this red line is their 200 simple moving average. And as you can see, it's essentially been holding price action back for the last half year or so. This is very, very important to take note of because, again, in the most basic of basic analysis is analysis if, if that's right if that's a proper term um <laughs> you can you can kind of make the you can kind of make a very uh valid face you know judgment at face value by just looking at that and saying okay are we above that or or are we below that and very obviously not only not only are we below it but with this price action that we have um at, over the last seven days it's very visually apparent to me that this is this is the best way to interpret this right here is is another rejection off your 200 simple moving average again kind of like a litmus test for you know are we generally bullish or are we generally bearish and as you can see again more importantly and taking it one step further there is essentially no change in behavior over the last six months and if the last six months have been essentially bearish well it it would fall that the that if we have no change in behavior well we'd probably just play out some more bearish uh, bearish tunes over here what else can we see? This purple line, that's your 200 exponential moving average. Another very, 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 very important moving average um, that is often talked about. And as you can see during this last week, we have not only broken it, but we've <laughs> but we've accelerated right past it, not even looking for a retest um, of this uh, of this broken 200 simple moving average, or sorry, exponential moving average right here. So again, strike two. Okay, what else can we find? Well, again, I always, I think it's, very relevant to any discussion when you're talking about technical analysis to understand what the bots are doing, what the what the algos are doing as you know their programming typically does run markets, and we can see very quickly right here making the assumption if we were to look at this as an extremely bearish outlook right here that this move from ten thousand to fifty eight hundred is like your real move so to say it's your real move it's it's a uh, it's that is the real direction and then this move from fifty eight hundred to uh what is it about eighty five hundred if you want to call it that is essentially a corrective uh, a correction like a corrective move upwards so if it is we should be able to find some sort of a um promising fibonacci retracement that that aligns with this. So again, using this 10,000 area as my first pivot and this 5,800 level as my second period, if you want to recreate this yourself, of course, you know, I was, you know, I, <laughs> there's no point in doing it if you can't, if you can't re recreate it yourself, of course. And, um, and you can see very quickly here that, hey, if this is correct, to me, it looks like we just came down uh, back up to the 618 Fibonacci retracement off of this corrective move right here and then immediately sold back down. That would imply an, an incredibly bearish, you know, algo target to me. As again, um, you know, while this move down here did look good, I mean, it did look good. I was long, I was long around 67.50 as well. I'm sure a lot of people on stream were, uh, were too. In fact, I know a lot because a lot of people reached out to me. Um, that, you know, that did look good. However, when you get stopped right here, not only at your 200 simple moving average, but also your 618 Fibonacci retracement, that tells me that, hey, the algos and the bots are selling. And if they're selling this area, then we can kind of make the inference that, oh, this is just a corrective move upwards after a big move downwards over here. And we're actually getting ready for the real move downwards. In fact, you can, I mean, you can kind of see it's already started, or at least that's how I would interpret it um, as of the current moment. So with that said, let me just turn on my, oh, I actually have the wrong camera on, but you know what? That's okay. I think my other camera makes me look more pretty. <laughs> Anyways, um, you can see that, yes, we are down at our 236 Fibonacci retracement um, currently, you know, around there. Of course, it's not, you know, it's, it's not like an exact uh, smash on it, but it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. What's more important is that if the bots are selling the 618, they probably will buy the 236 on the first pass. So if I am the kind of person who's looking for a bounce or if I'm, a front, or if I'm on an exchange that does not offer, you know, margin trading that allows me to short, uh, put on short positions, and, I, you know, the only thing I can do is play bounce as well, this would be the only area that I'd be interested in, in maybe playing something like that. Okay, so what else do we have to see? All right, 
Um, let's go over here to our good old bitstamp chart. I've already kind of filled this one out, so please bear with me really, really quickly. Oh, actually, just one more second. Back down to the GDAX chart. Okay. I want to talk about this really quickly as well. Um, with this current move downwards that we're, uh, cr that we're experiencing at, at this uh, moment in time, you could actually create what looks to me to be some some variation of a good old the good old bear flag the good old bear flag something like this something like this of course uh yes of course you don't have two touches on your top trend line you know um guess bitcoin just wasn't you know maybe just not strong enough to get there but you do have three touches on your bottom trend line or at least you do have uh do have them on the other exchanges we'll go over here to to bitstamp as of our as I already have it done okay so so yes you do have this right here okay look it's it's pretty it's beautiful and um and with that said, this is a bear flag formation. Funnily enough, we actually have several examples in this market of other coins uh, who were in bear flag formations, breaking them now to the downside. So the whole market is almost, and I hate using this fucking term, I apologize about this, but fractal of each other. Um, essentially, they're like mirror images of each other, and they kind of relate to each other in their different evolutions on the on how they're currently playing out their, their formations. So of course, I want to be clear in saying this, that it's not always a one-to-one -one thing, but... Um, but for the most part, and I'm sure most people would agree with this, or if you don't, you know, leave a leave a comment in the in the box below and regale me. Don't forget to call me an idiot. But, <laughs> but, um, but with that said, um, you know, you probably notice this yourself that most things pretty much trade similar to, similarly to each other. Yes, of course, there's you know a handful here and there that just you know, I don't know wh <laughs> whatever they're doing, they're doing, and uh, and they just don't play play by the rules. But for the most part, everything looks pretty damn similar. Everything trades together, and everything is kind of in like a different part of this a uh, uh, part of this a uh, part of the evolution of this formation right here. So we are back to testing the bottom support trend line of this bear flag formation, and just kind of show what I'm talking about. I'm going to go quickly over here to Mr. Ethereum. Mr. Buterol, as we call him over here in the cave. And the bear flag formation was actually put in uh, way over here. And you can see that we've broken it down to the downside. Uh, what is this, about six days ago? Yeah, six yeah, six or seven days ago, right around here. Uh, not only that, what about light cone? Good old light cone over here. And light cone... <laughs> Lycone broke it a few days ago, so it's a little bit, a little bit less advanced in this uh, formation than than Mr. Buterol broke it about four or five days ago, something like that. And what's our other top mark cap coin over here? Everyone's favorite one to hate, and <laughs> I'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, um, Bcash over here, or <laughs> I'll just, I'll just kind of leave it at, at that with that current statement. Bcash over here, uh, breaking this this bear flag formation to the downside, or if you want to call it a broadening wedge, you can. You know, again, it is very similar, uh, very similar antics kind of implied there breaking it downside and confirming it to the downside about two days, two or three days ago. So again, Bitcoin's the only one that I see that is still kind of hodling on to the, the to, to the last support, so to say, uh, again, right down here. Um, so I, j I want to quickly go over why this is relevant and why um, and why or sort or sort of why my experience um, in trading other markets, uh, tr in, uh, especially, you know, um, equity options uh, in my former life as a market maker on New York Stock Exchange, ARCA applies to this or, or at least kind of what I'm thinking here so you can understand. So in traditional markets, you have your big, you know, your big indexes, your big indices, so to say, like your spies, your indus, your NYAs, your, your NAVs, all these sorts of, you know, big indexes, right? And when they rally, you can think of them like a general, right? A general leading the charge. And the, uh, and like the underlying stocks that kind of make these things up are like the soldiers. And when the generals are going up and when they're charging, essentially, is, is how you can interpret that. And the soldiers don't follow, a.k.a. the other, you know, uh, kind of uh, substitute that for altcoins over there. That typically spells disaster in, in traditional equities. Uh, I don't think I have any examples uh, that come to my mind, um, at least in my experience, where that's ever been or turned out good. And so the way that I kind of look at Bitcoin and why this is relevant is because I look at Bitcoin as like the big index for everything else to kind of go off of. If Bitcoin ain't doing good, then um, then typically other things, you know, aren't, aren't looking too good either. So with that said, you know, everything else kind of not following Bitcoin when Bitcoin was was break, was having a pretty damn powerful move, actually, a pretty damn powerful move, rallying about 1200 to 1500 bucks in the span of a week and a half, two weeks, um, and nothing else followed, or, or at the very least, everything else was kind of stuck in their bear flag formations, kind of hanging down towards the bottom side of it. Uh, that was very telling to me, and... and um, and and I basically interpret that as uh, as you know it's is it's just it's just kind of like a warning sign you know yes Bitcoin looks okay right now the move was was decent but you know ha have your you know there are warning signs there are red flags so be careful all right so with that said 
Bitcoin kind of hanging around the bottom side of its bear flag right now. And again, most of the things, pretty much everything else has actually confirmed and broken it to the downside. All right. So with a bear flag, you actually can make a measure move off this. So let's just kind of uh, play around with this and see if it hits anything else that we're looking at. All right. So again, this is <laughs> now we're going to start to get into some of the bear porn over here. So again, please to please do turn your eyes, turn off your ears. If uh, if you get your information from Data Dash, Reddit, Chart Guys, Tone Vase, uh, who else? Who else is out there? I don't know. Philicone is uh, it's probably I don't even know. <laughs> These guys are probably great people. I don't I don't fucking know to be honest with you. I'm just kind of pulling out all of the uh, all of the names out of my asshole right here. But essentially, my point is, you know, a lot of the people on Twitter and Reddit I see as uh, blindly bullish. Oh, we're having a nice little reaction right here. Nice. Um, and, uh, and, and I just want to kind of offer up some potential scenarios of what I think is probably likely to come. But again, technical analysis, a little bit neutral here as long as we're above 6,800. All right. So this measure move would imply a move somewhere down here to this lovely horizontal line. How did it get so perfect there? I don't know. But um, that would be around a hair under 3,000 about, a hair under 3,000. So 2,950. And that also is, a if you've noticed, it's a nice horizontal level correlating with this past prior action in, what is it, uh, last June, actually. So quite literally a little bit more than a year ago now. Oh, man, look at Bitcoin go. And with that said, um, we do have a lot of indication that this is a historically relevant area. There's a lot of volume being done over here in the past. I think this was like one of the times when when China banned Bitcoin or some shit like that. So you can imagine that there's, you know, there's a lot of um, interest over here is what it tells me. And so from a historical uh, context, there's a lot of things going down over there. And, um, and and I imagine that if we were to get there, you'd probably you'd the the kind of idea here is you'd see those people kind of show back up who put in a floor somewhere right around here again. A lot of a uh, lot of uh, volume being done over there. All right, so okay, that that goes it for there. Now I'm gonna pull it out and when in doubt, pull it out and let's go over the full analysis over here. All right, so I I've gone back in time over here. Bitstamp is the one of the longest running Bitcoin exchanges that still trades today. Yes, I know people are gonna say, uh, well, Crown. Wasn't Mt. Gox the longest one? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was like one of the first ones, right? But no one trades on it anymore. Well, I don't even know if it's real anymore, to be honest with you. Anyways, um, anyways, so in 2014, we had a similar market cycle. Also, we did have one in 2013 as well, but I think most people are kind of convinced that this is unlikely what we're doing over here. But just to kind of quickly go over why I don't think we're doing a 2013 rather than a 2014. Keep in mind, 2013, we, we did have a pretty damn, you know, uh, hefty drop off, but we eventually went parabolic is because of your weekly RSI. Again, your weekly RSI in 2013 never really got into the bear zone. It actually just got into the neutral zone and bounced right off there. As you can see in 2014, we got well below the neutral zone and hung around in the bear zone for, you know, months and months and months. And as you can see in 2018, we have not only uh, cracked the neutral zone, but we've been living below, we've been pretty comfortable below the, uh, the bear zone or, or just kind of hanging out right below the bear zone for quite some time. It looks like we might be, uh, we might be kind of, um, getting ready to go back there anyways all right okay so that's why i just kind of marked that one off or at least or at least it's less likely right now all right so in 2014 this is the last like big bear cycle that we had as you can see i do have um, a light a nice little measurement tool that uh, that I took from the ultimate high to the ultimate um, to the ultimate kind of like first turnaround po uh, point, so to say. As you can see, I do have this um, this diagonal trend line going all the way from the ultimate top, um, kind of crisscrossing along here. And the relevance of this is that you know we broke out of it on a nice move over here, and then we actually kind of bounced along of it on a, a couple times on the way down before eventually finding our lows, as you can see. So again, keep in mind that's also a 71% uh, move um, from the top to the bottom in this first phase right here, and it took about 182 days in 2014. In 2018, we have a very similar uh, setup over over here actually, 70 about a little bit over 70% uh, move from top to bottom, so or, or on this bottom so far. Of course, we've actually gone lower already. And uh, it took about 140 days. So, you know, if we are doing something similar, it kind of imply that we're moving a little bit faster in, re in relation to this. And as you can see, we have this, this very similar logarithmic trend line right here um, that, we, you know, we broke out of uh, initially. And now we're kind of... Um, now we're kind of bouncing along it, or sorry, it's actually a little bit, a uh, little bit messed up right there. I need to redo this one. There we go. Okay, something like this. Yeah, something like this would be uh, right. Let's go right there. Okay, beautiful. All right, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just not needs to kind of get us in the range there, so we can, uh, so we can have an idea of what's going on. All right. So again, we do. You know, I'm just gonna kind of leave this uh, measure moving here, and um, and kind of go over the relevant points of this. All right. So 
you can see that in 2014, we did kind of bounce along this uh, this logman, the trend line for quite some time, and we already have kind of tested it um, down, you know, here once, you know, once or twice or, or whatever it might be, um, and uh, and and so it's so far, you know, kind of acting out, acting as you want it to act, um, <laughs> or maybe or maybe not, depending upon your disposition. Anyways. With that said, I just want to kind of um, go over a few other preliminary things before we get deep into it. You see this this dotted line right here at the bottom. This trend line has been constructed on a logarithmic time frame and has never been broken in the almost 10 year history of Bitcoin. And more importantly, anytime that Bitcoin has touched it, it has never gone lower. So it has a very good, you could say that that's a pretty good horizontal, or sorry, pretty good historical relevancy um, with this trend line right here. And something that I'd be, you know, I'd want to pay attention to. Again, almost 10 years of history. Um, and this dotted line would start to crisscross and intersect this first horizontal area right here, which again, remember we did actually bounce a few times off this area right here um, in 20, uh, what was it, 2014. Um, and, uh, and that would start to intersect this horizontal area right here, also a 786 Fibonacci retracement from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the last market cycle at around about 4,400-ish, some, some like this, 4,400, 4, you know, give or take 100 bucks. It's, again, these are, you, you can't be too specific when it comes to uh, this, you know, analyzing this far out, but I'd imagine it looks something like this. And look at that. Also, that purple line, that 200 exponential, is likely going to start to kind of curl up and meet somewhere around this blue box territory right here. Again, also your 786 Fibonacci retracement, um, and also this horizontal level right here. Do we have any sort of uh, measure moves kind of pointing towards there? Well, I'm sure if we kind of look uh, go through here, we can find some. And you can see very clearly here. If uh, let me just get rid of this. Actually, no, we do need this. Um, so just really, really clearly here. Let's uh, let's get our dr our nice little drawing tools out. I'm gonna do a curve and show what I think might be happening over here. And look at that. Hey, we got some sort of a uh, some sort of a cup and handle going on over here. Is what it looks like to me. Or sorry, maybe it's something like this. Yes, whoops, hey, get over here. <laughs> there we go. All right, beautiful. And then maybe your handle's uh, right here. Something like that would look right to me. Well, if that is, then we can make a, then we can make a measure move off that. And let's, let's just kind of uh, play around with this idea. All right, so again, um, taking us right down there. Sorry, that's, uh, that's not right. What I need to do, <laughs> what I need to do is this, this area over here. Sorry again, should have prepared a little bit more for this video. However, it's this area right here that I'm looking at. There we, <laughs> as you can see, I already have my handle drawn in there. Beautiful, all right, perfect. So let's, uh, let's, let's do the measure, the measure move off on this one. And again, just kind of go over the relevant statistics on it. The volume's right for a cup and handle. The, uh, we have a nice handle over here. We have the right shape, we have the right size, we have the right smell, we have the right taste. That's all you need. And so we can make a measure, move, a measure move off that. And look at that. Oh, beautiful. It takes you right down here to this horizontal level right here at, four, at about 4,400, which again is that nice horizontal area with good confluence in this uh, about a year uh, last September. Again, a lot of volume being done around here. So we know there's a lot of, there's probably someone interested or we'd, we'd imagine that they might kind of step back into the fray and like Walter, <laughs> and uh, and again, it kind of leads us back into this uh, blue box ter territory over here. So yes, we actually do have something kind of pointing towards this um, this area right here. So that makes like three or four or five different things. Again, just kind of go over it. It's, 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 it's the 200 exponential, or likely to be the 200 exponential on your weekly time frame over here. It's also your 786 Fibonacci retracement. It's also a nice horizontal level and a measure move off the, off the inverse cup and handle over here. Okay, I don't know how many that is, but it's, it's, an <laughs> it's enough to pay attention to for me. So that's the first area of interest that I'd kind of be looking at. And again, this all comes with the major caveat that we must close a daily candlestick below 6,800. If you do that, then yes, this all becomes not only a uh, potential reality, but in my opinion, it's something that I'd be leaning towards. But again, you know, tentacle analysis is a little bit more neutral in kind of making those sorts of statements. My opinion, my experience would, would kind of line up and say, hey, yeah, I, th I think it's probably likely. Now, what's now? of course, we just kind of described, we just went over a much more bear scenario all the way down here to about 2,900, give or take a little bit, this blue box down here. Well, <laughs> What's the relevancy of this area? Well, you'd all, you can also imagine that this 200 simple moving average on your weekly chart is likely to kind of, uh, and it's the red one right here, just for reference, is going to start to kind of curl around and probably come around right around here, uh, it, uh, around that 3,000 level. It's also this horizontal support trend line right here. It would also likely co uh, correlate with a with uh, with some sort of a bounce off of this logarithmic trend line right here, which again, you know, is kind of how we made our lows in 2014. 
It's also your 886 Fibonacci retracement right here. If you can actually read that, it is the 886 Fibonacci retracement. Of, I do want to say that this does not come with your default Fibonacci tool. You have to actually add it in there, but I can tell you it is actually a Fibonacci number. And, uh, and while I don't pay attention to it too much, when it does line up with my other views, <laughs> I do. <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding. But my point is here is, you know, I'm looking for every little bit of confluence or, or possible factor to kind of support this view. All right. So with that said, and, and it's also a measure move, right? With that said, what else do we have to kind of see in this? Well, again, going back toward our percentage moves over here, this percentage drawdown, 71% from the ultimate high to that first, you know, kind of big low right here, very similar to, to what we did over here before we broke the logarithmic trend line. Again, those are the two key ingredients and enough for me to kind of say, okay, on to the next phase. So if we, if we extrapolate this down to your ultimate low in 2014 right here, we'll look at that. That's about 86% drawdown. Okay, what's the relevancy? Of, the, of that crown, are you, are you stupid? Um, of course I am, but let me just let me just show you this. All right, if we were to extrapolate this down to perhaps that three thousand level, let's see what it kind of spits back. And you can see, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, it's about eighty five and a half percent drawdown. Very very similar to what we did over here in twenty fourteen. Again, just another you know tertiary type thing pointing that direction. Um, so it's not that I go off of that just, you know, one-to-one. -one. I don't want to make this seem like a one-to-one -one thing. Historical analysis is certainly not a one-to-one -one thing, but I think it's worth mentioning. And again, you know, in, in the context of all the other information that we have there, kind of pointing towards this area, I, I, I'd, I'd want to have this on my radar just based off that. It's also, you know, also in 2014, we did bottom. <laughs> We did bottom at the, uh, let me just get rid of these really quickly. There we go. And there we go. Uh, we also did bottom on our 2014 mark cycle at the 886 Fibonacci retracement. And look at that. The 886 Fibonacci retracement is, you know, kind of where that's coming in as well. And just for reference, we did um, accumulate for about 10 months starting here and ending about here from the 886 Fibonacci retracement to the 786 Fibonacci retracement. So it could be, you know, this again, talk, just talking about possibilities, it could be that we put in our time going sideways between this area at about 4,400 to about 3,000 ish area. If I had to, you know, make a little gander of a guess. All right. What, what else can we look at? Um, hmm. Okay. Well, let's just go back and kind of talk. Let's just, let's just give some more bear porn. Why don't we? Okay. Taking everything off over here. Just looking at the weekly or we should do this over here on stamp. Um, you can see once again, we have been stonewalled by this uh, blue 30 simple moving average right here on the weekly. Again, same sort of logic as that red 200 simple moving average on the daily. I mean, they, they probably, they, they should correlate with each other given the, uh, given the relation between them um, <laughs> on a seven day and a daily. And, uh, and you can see that, you know, it's, it's again, it's a clear rejection uh, in, in my book right here. However, I do want to offer up this again, you know, this, I want to be as balanced as possible and uh, given the bulls, you know, <laughs> um, until the rest of the day on, again, this is Sunday, uh, August 5th, 2018. <laughs> Um, you know, it's, uh, we do get a new weekly later today and, and I do want to kind of come at this, you know, uh, obviously this is a little bit improbable I would imagine, but you know, anything's possible. We've all seen crazier things in Bitcoin. If this weekly that we're currently again, closing tonight on, on August 5th, 2018 at 8 PM Eastern standard time closes above this yellow line at about, uh, which is your 21 simple, uh, exponential moving average at about 7,700, I would actually interpret that as, uh, as a little bit has kind of bullish actually um i mean certainly neutral but over but i'd actually start to lean to the bull side it would be it'd be one of those tells for me um uh, but but the way that it is we have no indication of that i just want to be talking you know again full full um uh, potency of this analysis so to say and with that said the way that it is right now, we're not only just breaking the 21 exponential, but we're also smashing through that green 55 exponential right there. And have, 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 have not only just retraced the last uh, candlestick, but we've actually, uh, we're actually trading well below it. So again, these, all these things kind of come together in confluence and, uh, and just kind of, you know, looking at the overall picture of this thing makes me really want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, hazard a guess on what could be happening for the rest of this, uh, for, for the next part of this market phase. Now I'm going to go over here to something that no one ever looks at. 
because <laughs> it's cryptocurrency. All right, and I just lost my voice right there like a goddamn schoolboy. So make fun of me as well. <laughs> Anyways, or don't, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all good. Anyways, um, this is the monthly over here. And the monthly is, is the one that's, uh, I, think a lot of, I think, pretty damn scary to a lot of people because, again, when you look at the monthly from, uh, from the logarithmic uh, view over here, you can see that this thing has, you know, it has plenty of room to go down if it wanted to. And, again, while I don't actually think that this is likely to happen, I want to do a thorough analysis here and show that actually just from the most basic of basic ways of looking at your horizontals, this level right here, our former high of this uh, of that 2013 2014 market cycle is around 11 1150 that's actually technically your monthly support again i actually don't believe that bitcoin is going to get down there but for the purposes of being thorough around here i will i just wanted to point that out briefly okay what else do we have to look at what else do we need to be aware of on the monthly now last monthly um everyone got really excited when august started because for some reason crypto twitter and youtube has got it in their heads that i don't know where this where this shit comes from that this that this uh candlestick right here is a bullish engulfing candlestick and uh and it's nothing of the sort again uh it, for a bullish engulfing you need to trade below the low and close above the high of the former uh candlestick right here and more importantly there's nothing reversally ish um uh screaming at me on this candlestick right here and the reason why that is because your volume is extremely low on it if we're going to put in a bottom on the market and really reverse and accelerate to the upside i want to see some participation and agreement and confluence in the market and we and i just don't see that right here and, and as you can see we are already you know retracing about half of it so far with that said um it's not until we start you know uh taking out the low of this guy right here where the monthly really starts to say hey <laughs> get short get short bitch it's time to uh, it's time to go down um, but for, for all intents and purposes right now, we are still hodling onto this, uh, yellow 21 exponential right here. Um, so, you know, you can still kind of go off that, but uh, again, as the saying goes, the more times that you test the support or resistance, the weaker it does indeed get. And we've already tested this one. We've already kind of wel welcomed out in my opinion, um, our, our tests on this one. So what else can we talk about? Okay. Well, let's, let's go over. Let's let's just talk about a few more a few more critical areas on this thing. I'm gonna go back to my GDAX chart as it's nice and fresh, and similar to how we have this area over here, similar to how we have uh, this kind of like if you want to call it a floor, you can call it a floor. But essentially, this area, and I'm gonna highlight it in the blue box, the the blue box of pre uh, <laughs> pre's <laughs> of pre's and prosper um prosperity. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, highly unprofessional. Um, that to me is kind of like the it's kind of like the drawing the line in the sand the second that you start closing dailies below this area not just a wick below but like closing a daily below is the second that crown gets extremely goddamn bearish and starts you know market selling all sorts of crazy sh crazy shit um with that said there is you know there is a little bit more of a bullish outlook so what do i be what would i be looking for you know the opposite but equal um uh trigger for uh, for this scenario right here for 6800 well it, again, in the most simple of simple ways, it'd be looking at this area right here. As long as we're below 11,500 or, or whatever this might, uh, you know, directly come at, in at, I can't be too, uh, I, well, I can't be, I can't be bullish, really. <laughs> I can't be like too bullish, you know, expecting all-time highs is my point um, from a more traditional standpoint. Uh, as long as we're actually above 6,800 and below 11,500, you kind of have to do, uh, you kind of have to do look at this in a more neutral tone now of course when we're looking when we're looking at the different um you know data points in here and looking for little clues like uh like that south park episode getting all excited over clues um it does it does make me certainly think a lot more bearish um but of course with that said you know i want to i want to be thorough in this analysis and kind of discuss all possibilities of course you know just like just like with us kind of you know hit uh taking out all these bullish uh you know things that we had going on for us earlier here um, and kind of, you know, showing more bearish signals, the, the more bull, the, kind of like what would be hinting at a more bullish signal is if we started just uh, by, again, by the most basic of basic ways, closing dailies above this red 200 simple moon average right here. Um, but, of but of course, you know, again, the big areas, 11,500 and 6,800 or, or wherever this area is indeed coming in at, I think it's actually a little bit lower. Yeah, it is 6,750. So, so we'll just call it that, you know, if you want to be conservative and wait for like the, the slap in the face, like, like shut up and get short or, or, you know, you can do whatever you want. Again, I'm not, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. You shouldn't listen to anything I do, but <laughs> I'm just kind of sharing my views over here. Just sharing my opinions. Um, 
and uh, and that's kind of how I'd be looking at this right now. I think that's going to do it for this analysis. Um, again, I want to be very, very adamant in saying that while I do, you know, while I have been looking for clues for the for the good old clues in these charts over here, um, and I am certainly leaning bearish right now. I, you know, I want to make it clear that until you actually get a daily closing below this area right here, 6750, it's, uh, you know, there's still, there's still hopes. There's still hope. Change. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Another bad South Park reference. Um, but my point with that is, is that, um, you know, things can, things can always, you know, set up looking like one way and then completely, you know, whip you around and, uh, and then show the other hand. Uh, and the market has a very, very good way of doing that. But of course, you know, I hope everyone's been pretty damn clear. Uh, with me um, on these streams, with me saying that while I don't know the timing, I do believe that it's very, 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 very likely that we do play out a very bearish scenario where, where we take out the current yearly lows and make new lows below that. Um, and again, the areas that I'm looking for would be 4,400, give or take a little bit tentatively. And then if that area gets taken out, we do have a lot of, we actually have more things kind of pointing towards about 2,900, you know, again, give or take a few hundred um, because, you know, it's, it's just way too far away. So that's going to do it for today. It's been an absolute, an absolute pleasure, pleasure speaking with you. Free Ross Ulbrich, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.